Whoa, just whoa, but wait, there's more entertainment like this coming. As the world watches, monumental shifts are happening that are reshaping our spiritual landscape, leading to a confrontation between God's truth and man-made traditions. Pope Francis, the spiritual leader of over a billion Catholics worldwide, recently made a statement that echoed across religious communities. He boldly declared, Tutte le religioni sono un cammino per arrivare a Dio. This inclusive message may sound appealing on the surface, but it raises serious questions. Is this truly what God says in his word? Or is this a man-centered ideology that ultimately distorts divine truth? This is directly undermining and contradicting the first commandment of God and the entire gospel. This is uh, very, for me, concerning that the Pope, with such a responsibility, with such a holy task which he has, to divinely receive task to confirm, to strengthen all in the faith, he is actually doing the contrary. He is confusing people with such statements. It's very serious. And I am concerned uh, also with, with his soul uh, because he has to answer this before God. This is a serious, we cannot play with God in even Pope Francis cannot simply play with God. He will answer this. And therefore, I ask people to pray seriously for him. The Pope's ongoing efforts to bring together faiths as diverse as Islam, Hinduism, and Christianity under his leadership is a striking reflection of Bible prophecy. What we are seeing is not just a matter of religious diplomacy. The world's most powerful leaders, including the Pope, are leading a movement to unify all religions under one banner. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Come here. As you can see, I'm, I'm not just MAGA, I'm dark MAGA. Um, President Trump must win to preserve the Constitution. He must win to preserve democracy in America. America felt the truth of Scripture. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. In God we trust! Excuse me, please. Let me repeat, I ask that the member is taken out of the room now. And this is the woman most Romanians would like to have as future president. The Pope's message even echoed right here in our own small city, with our mayor taking direct inspiration from the Pope's statements. Only through open dialogue and collaboration can we build a society where everyone's values are respected and protected. Satan knows he doesn't have much time left, so <laughs> he's moving at the speed of light. Presidenta! 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 In Mexico, we witness a bizarre scene at the inauguration of Claudia Sheinbaum, the country's first female president. What should have been a solemn political event took a darker spiritual twist when a pagan sun worship ritual was performed. Claudia, que los elementos sagrados te acompañen, que el agua bendita purifique siempre tu alma. Que el aire siempre esté contigo. Que nuestra madrecita tierra te bendiga siempre. During this ritual, a woman instructed Shane Baum to turn towards east to worship the sun. Y vamos a levantar nuestras manos con el dirección a donde sale el sol al oriente. Invocamos a los Nahuales a las deidades y a los demás seres y espíritu divino que habita este lugar. An act that echoes ancient pagan practices of sun worship. Hmm, interesting. That reminds me of another group of people who also have the same rituals. Albert McKay states, The place of the rising sun, the source of material light and of intellectual enlightenment, is the east. Hence, the East has always been considered 
the most sacred of the cardinal points by Freemasons, because it is the place where the master sits and from one slide is distributed to the lodge. And God clearly hates that. Historically, pagan religions, including those of Egypt and Babylon, often worship the sun. This practice is condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 8.16 tells us, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces towards the east, and they worship the sun towards the east. So this event might have seemed like a mere tradition, but it carries deeper meanings. And it makes me wonder, is this also pat to God as the Pope states? Is it any coincidence that sun worship is resurfacing in political and religious realms? Not at all. In fact, the Catholic Church's own catechism admits to having adopted sun worship by swapping the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, the day dedicated to the sun instead of God our Lord. The Catholic Church boldly claims its authority in this matter, as the Catholic record states, Sunday is our own mark of authority. The Church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. This shift is no mere detail. It's a clear statement of power and control, challenging the supremacy of God's commandments. But what does God's word say about the Sabbath? In Exodus 28-11, we read, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in thou shalt not do any work. God's Sabbath day is Saturday, not Sunday. If you want to know more about it, I have done a full episode on this subject. You'll find it linked in the description. The Bible warns of a final conflict between God's law and man's law, centering on true and counterfeit worship. In Daniel 7.25, we read that an antichrist power will think to change times and laws, attempting to alter God's holy Holy law. Once a change is the shift from Sabbath to Sunday, a day historically dedicated to sun worship. Prophecies in Daniel and Revelation predict a time when humanity must choose between God's commandments and human traditions. Revelation 13, 16 to 17 warns that the beast power will enforce a mark restricting those who do not comply from buying or selling, and he causes all, both small and great, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. The Pope's efforts for religious unity and the push for a global Sunday law in 2024 framed as environmental protection and social harmony aim to establish Sunday as a universal day of rest. This is an attack on the fourth commandment, replacing God's law with human traditions. Just have a look on this clip at J4 Summit 2024. One of the most significant proposals should be the introduction of a weekly Earth Sabbath to combat climate change and promote environmental stewardship. The weekly Earth Sabbath aims to establish a global day of rest and reflection on environmental sustainability, raising awareness and inspiring collective action. By championing the weekly Earth Sabbath, Italy would position itself as a leader in international diplomacy and environmental sustainability on the global stage. The 2024 G7 Summit and the weekly Earth Sabbath proposal could present a unique opportunity to address pressing global challenges and foster international cooperation. We need protesters in Italy to act now as a voice for a weekly Earth Sabbath. In Revelation 14, 9-12, we find the final warning to the world. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. The choice is clear. Will we follow the law of men or the commandments of God? At the heart of this conflict lies the question of authority. Whom will we obey? As we watch the global push for Sunday observance gain momentum, it's crucial to recognize the spiritual battle taking place. This isn't just about the day of the week, it's about alliance. 
The Pope and global leaders are pulling in one direction, urging the world to follow human laws and traditions. But God is calling his people to remain faithful to his word, to his commandments and to his truth. If we look throughout history, only one power aligns perfectly with Bible prophecies. Like the Protestant reformers before us, such as Martin Luther, John Calvin and John Knox, they all pointed unmistakably towards Rome. Martin Luther says, We here are of the conviction that the papacy is the seat of the true and real Antichrist. Calvin describes the Pope as the very Antichrist in his Institutes of the Christian Religion, reinforcing the view that the papacy embodied the Antichrist deceptive powers. John Knox states, The Pope should be recognized as the very Antichrist and son of perdition of whom Paul speaks. As we see these events unfold, the Pope's call for unity, the rise of pagan rituals in politics, and the push for a global Sunday law, the Bible's prophecies are coming to life. In the end, it's a question of loyalty. Will you follow the Pope and the laws of man, or will you remain loyal to God's eternal law, his Ten Commandments, which include the true Sabbath? This is the defining moment. The time has come to stand firm on the side of God's truth, even as the world follows a counterfeit system of worship. As Joshua says, Choose you this day whom ye will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How about you? Do you think we're on the verge of the end times or is there still time? We don't know the times, as our Lord said to the Apostle. It's not upon you to know the time which the Father established. But we have signs such um, unprecedented degradation of human society and morals. But we have ever more signs, apocalyptical signs of a rebellion against God, ever more growing public blasphemy against God. So these are the signs of um, clear uh, satanic manifestations of an apostasy in society and partly within the church. Time is short, my friend. If this message spoke to you, don't forget to subscribe, like and share it with someone who might need it today. Thank you for watching and God bless you.